Hello, welcome to English Composition. I'm Michael Chang. I'm here with Cher Chen today. 各位同学，大家好，欢迎回来英文作文课程。我是 Cher， 在我身边的是郑老师。Today in Unit Twelve, we are going to talk about writing a narrative folk tale. 好，今天呢，我们要为各位同学讲解的呢是单元第十二哦。那这个单元中呢，我们要讲解的是如何去写出一个好的民间故事。So a folk tale is a traditional story that was written in narrative form, and folk tales are often used to teach morality or ethics, which is why they're passed down from generation to generation. 好，民间故事呢，指的就是一种传统哦，这流传久远的故事。那通常呢，它都是的目的呢，是在于教导人们一些伦常道义。那也就是为什么它可以流传这么久远的原因。And we'll also learn how to use direct quotations in a narrative. 好，我们也会学习呢，如何呢，在这个民间故事中间呢，穿插一些对话，然后让你的这个叙述文看起来更有趣。All、right now, let's learn more about folk tales in our writing focus section. 好，那首先呢，我们先进入写作重点的部分，让各位同学再多了解一下什么叫做民间故事。So folk tales are stories that are common and familiar to most people within a culture. 好，民间故事呢，指的是呢，在同一个文化之中的人们哦，都很熟悉的一些故事。And sometimes these the characters in a folk tale are animals that act like people, and sometimes you have characters that get involved in some kind of a magical situation. 好，那有时候呢，在民间故事里面的主角哦，会是一些拟人化的动物。好，那有时候呢，这些主角甚至会进入一些魔法的幻境之中。And folk tales also often have a moral, and this means that they teach the listeners a lesson about how to get along with others or how to act in society. 好，我们常常说呢，民间故事都会具有一些教条或教义哦。那主要呢，就是目的是要教导这个听者呢，哦，在一些社会中该如何自处，跟与人相处的一些方式。And so, therefore, folk tales are often passed down from generation to generation, and often these are the kind of stories that parents might tell to their children before they go to bed. 啊，那通常呢，民间故事呢都是这样透过口耳哦代代相传。那经常呢会是像父母啊，在孩子去睡觉之前呢，跟他们讲床边故事的时候，去让这故事流传下去的。And now, since folk tales are often passed down orally instead of in written form, these stories they can change in detail, or each storyteller can shape the story to his or her own situation. 好，那既然呢，我们知道这些民间故事哦，是透过口语相传的方式，而不是透过纸笔写下来的、哦。那也因此呢，在讲述故事的人呢，就会帮这些故事做一些变动。哦，那会根据不同的这个讲者呢，哦，会产生不一样的版本。And one famous set of folk tales is called Aesop's Fables. And Aesop's Fables often use animals that think or act like people as the main characters. 好，那在民间故事的系列当中哦，最有名的一个应该就是所谓的伊索寓言了。哦，那伊索寓言呢，它就是经常哦，把这些动物啊拟人化哦，那让他们像人一样的去演出一些动作。And these fables always end with a moral, which is a short statement that explains the lessons that the audience should learn from the fable. 好，那这个伊索寓言最有名的呢，就是它经常哦会以一个教育意义作为结尾。啊，那常常呢是会用一句话来解释出来读者们应该要学习到的一些伦理教条。And traditional translations of Aesop's fables can be found at this website. 好，那各位同学可以在这画面上看到一个网址哦。那我们刚刚提到呢，这个伊索寓言呢，其实是从古希腊时代慢慢流传下来的一一系列的寓言哦。那现在呢，我们可以在这个网址中找到的呢，是比较传统的一个大家都可以广为接受的一个英文的翻译。Right, so let's take a look at one version of the fable, the shepherd boy and the wolf, that came from that website. 好，那现在呢，我们先让同学看一下，从刚刚那个网址之中呢，哦，我们可以得到一个哦传统的英文翻译版本的《伊索寓言》。The shepherd boy and the wolf. A shepherd boy, who watched a flock of sheep near a village, brought out the villagers three or four times by crying out, "Wolf, wolf!" And when his neighbors came to help him, laughed at them for their pains. The wolf, however, did truly come at last. The shepherd boy, now really alarmed, shouted in an agony of terror, "Pray, do come and help me! The wolf is killing the sheep." 
but no one paid any heed to his cries, nor rendered any assistance. The wolf, having no cause of fear, at his leisure lacerated or destroyed the whole flock. There's no believing a liar, even when he speaks the truth. 现在呢，我会把这个故事呢，哦，以一个传统的中文的方式来做一个翻译。一同长木于山，喜望言，时而大呼：“狼来也！”众人即感之，同曰：“戏。”众叹而归。忽一日，狼果来，同大呼：“狼来也！”众疑同戏，俱不往。同尽失其阳，痛而归。望言者。All right. So now notice that there are few details that are provided, and there's no context to this version of the story. We don't know much about the village. We don't know when the story takes place. 好，我们各位同学可以发现哦，刚刚这个版本呢是传统的翻译版本。哦，那这种传统的版本呢，它一开始就非常直截了当的叙述故事的内容，很少呢去提供一些细节的描述。所以，我们对于这整个发生的背景，像这个村庄呢，完全都不了解，也不知道这故事发生在什么时间。Now, instead, this traditional version just jumps directly into narrating the events of the story. In addition, we see that the language is quite old, since the story was translated over 100 years ago. 好，我们会发现呢，这个版本的故事呢，是一开头就开门见山的，直接进入了叙述故事的主题。好，那同时呢，各位同学应该也发现了，刚刚呢，不管是老师念的英文版本，或是我的翻译中文版本，哦，这文字呢，都是用字是比较老气的。那因为呢，这个版本的翻译呢，其实已经翻译超过大概一百年了，那所以呢，它的用字上也不像是现代语言常常使用的方式。Right, and since this version of the story is so old, we're going to create a new version that's more interesting for a modern audience. 好，那既然呢这样子的用字这么的老气哦，各位同学听起来想必也觉得哎呀好不舒服哦。那我们现在呢这个单元的目标就是要去创作一个哦一个比较符合现代读者能够去理解的用使用现代英文的版本。Right, so now here are some tips for creating your own version of a folk tale. 好，那要帮助各位同学呢，去创造出你自己的版本的这个新的民间故事呢。哦，以下我们会提供各位同学一些好的技巧。So first, think about what the story means. 好，首先呢，你要先想一想这个故事想要传达的意义是什么。In the writing model, the point of the story is to show how bad it is to lie. 好，那在这个写作范例里面呢，各位同学应该很容易就可以抓到他要传达的教条呢，就是说谎是不好的。So in your folk tale, make sure that you know what the point of your story is. 好，那在你自己的这个版本的民间故事里面呢，当然你自己要清楚你想要传达的这个教条意义到底是什么。And so you might have a moral to the story, like in the Aesop's fables, or maybe you have no moral to teach, and the point of your story is just to entertain your audience with a humorous story. 好，那你写的故事呢？当然可以像《伊索寓言》一样，哦，是有一个教育意义的，哦，他希望能够教育你的读者。那当然，或者呢，你也可以单纯的只是为了要娱乐你的读者，而去讲述一个幽默有趣的故事。So now, after you've decided on the point of your story, the next thing that you want to do is to visualize the story that you are telling. 好，那当你呢已经确认好你的故事，它写作的目的跟教条是什么之后呢？下一件事要做的就是把你正在叙述的故事形象化。So think about where does where does the story take place? Imagine that you can see the place. Imagine that you can see the houses or the trees where the story took place. 好，那首先你要想一想，哎，这个故事是在哪里发生的啊？哦，仿佛你好像就可以看见那个地点一样。哦，那想象这故事中应该要出现的房子或是树木。Right, and then the next thing that you want to do is imagine the characters in the story. So. Can you use your mind to see the characters and see if there's any kind of special feature that each character has? 好，那接下来呢，要想象的就是故事中的人物了。哦，那是一样的，用你的头脑去思考一下，哎，这些人长得应该是什么样子啊？哦，那把他这些特殊的地方去描述出来。And so this could be something very special about what the person looks like, or it could be something very unique about the person, the, the person's personality. 好，那这个所谓很特别的地方呢，可以是他们的长相，或者是他们的个性哦，把这些特奇特的地方呢，哦，这些特征把它写出来。Right now, after you spent some time visualizing the story, the next thing that you want to do is plan the events of the story. 
。好，那下一件你可以做的事情呢，就是开始计划好这个故事中会发生的所有事件。All right, so now you want a beginning, a middle, and an end to your story. 好，那就像我们在讲故事一样哦，每个故事都要有开头、中间的段落跟结尾的部分。All right, now the beginning of your story should provide a setting by explaining where the story takes place and who is involved. And this beginning should also set up some of the some of the potential problems that might occur. 好，那开头的部分呢？当然，我们就应该首先先把这故事的背景资讯都讲述清楚啦。像是在何时发生的，在何地发生的，有哪些人物参与在其中？好，那在开头的部分还有一点很重要的，就是你要把你设计好的这个某种问题、潜在的问题，先把它藏在这开头的段落里面。Now, when we get to the middle of the story, you should have some type of conflict that re that results from the potential problem, and this is where the main action of the story will usually take place. 好，那在故事中间的部分呢？你应该要叙述哦，这个因为潜在的问题而产生的一些冲突。那中间的部分通常也是故事最重要的一个部分哦，主要的故事都发生在这里。And then finally, when we get to the end of the story, this is where the conflict should be resolved and a lesson is learned. 好，那到了结尾的部分呢？当然，刚刚提到的所有的冲突都应该要被解决。那呢，这个应该要学习到的一些人生的教条呢，也可以在这个地方被提出来。So now, after you've worked through the whole story, you also have to take some time to revise your folk tale. 好，那最后呢，你还是要花一点时间去好好校订一下你写出来的故事。Right. And so take time to read it again, and then think about how to improve it. And so you can ask yourself: Are there too many details? Are there areas that need more details? 好，那你花点时间再仔细的读一下这一篇你写好的这个民间故事，想一想要怎么改进它。故事是不是包含了太多的不相干的细节啊？有没有哪些部分是需要更多的描述呢 ？All right, and then one final thing is to consider using dialogue in your folk tales instead of just telling what happens. Sometimes, if you let your characters speak for themselves with direct quotations, it feels more alive. 好，那除此之外呢？你可以再穿插一些对话在你的故事当中哦。与其平铺直述的去发生去讲述这个故事呢，哦，你可以使用所谓直接引用的方式，让故事中的角色呢为自己发声。All right, let's take a break now, and we'll be back in a few moments. 好，谢谢各位同学，我们现在先休息一下，待会儿继续回来再讨论。Right, so now we learned about a narrative folk tale in the first section of the show. Now let's take some time to see this revised version of the Shepherd Boy and the Wolf in our writing model. 好，那我们刚才跟各位同学谈论了一下要改写你的民间故事的一些小技巧。那现在呢，我们要花一点时间哦，来看看这一篇已经改写了哦，使用这个比较呃现代的英文的版本哦。那改写出来的这个版本呢，到底这故事会变成什么样子呢？让我们一起来看一下。The boy who cried wolf. 放羊的孩子 There was a young shepherd boy from a village in the hills. Every morning, the boy would go out to watch over the sheep as they wandered around the hills surrounding the village. 在山里的村庄里，有一个年轻的牧羊男孩。每天早上，这个男孩都得去看照着围绕着村庄周围满山遍野吃草的羊群们。The boy's job was very important. Because there was a dark and dangerous forest nearby, and wolves were known to come from the forest to attack the sheep. This job is very important because the village has a dark and dangerous forest nearby, and wolves are often seen coming from the forest to attack the sheep. Unfortunately, the boy also thought his job was very boring. He never had anyone to talk to, and every boring day was exactly the same as the day before. 不幸的是，这个男孩觉得他的工作很无趣。他没有任何同伴可以聊天，而且这个无趣的工作是天赋一天，完全没有改变。So one day, the, the boy thought up a great trick to make his day fun and interesting. He breathed in deeply, and then he cried out as loudly as he could, "Wolf! Wolf! A wolf is attacking the sheep!" 有一天，这个男孩想到一个好玩的把戏，可以让他的生活变得比较有乐趣一点。他深深的吸了一口气，然后用尽全力的大叫：“狼来了！狼来了！有狼在攻击羊群呢、啊
all the villagers grabbed rakes and holes and pitchforks, and they came running up into the hills to defend the sheep from the wolf. 所有的村民听到呼救声，都抓起了草耙、锄刀、干草叉，从山坡上奔跑来，想要保护羊群免于野狼的攻击。The villagers gathered around the boy, shouting questions at him. Where's the wolf? Which way did it go? Did it hurt any sheep? 村民们匆忙地赶到男孩的身边，大声地询问他发生了什么事。狼在哪儿啊？他往哪跑了？狼伤了哪只羊吗？ But the boy just laughed and laughed, and when the villagers realized that they had been tricked, they scolded the boy and returned to their jobs in the village. 男孩却只是大声地笑着。村民们发现他们被骗了，气得大骂着男孩一顿，然后返回工作岗位上。The next day, the boy was bored again, so he decided to play his trick one more time. Wolf! Wolf! A wolf is attacking the sheep," he cried out loudly. 隔天，这男孩又感觉到无聊了，所以他决定再开一次玩笑。狼来了，狼来了，有狼在攻击羊群啊！他再一次大声地喊叫着。Once again, the villagers grabbed their weapons and rushed up the hill to protect the sheep. 再一次的，村民们抓起了他们的武器，匆匆忙忙地赶来，想保护羊群。But when they got to the top of the hill, they just saw the shepherd boy sitting in the sun on a big rock, laughing and laughing at the angry faces of the villagers. So they scolded the boy again and returned to the village. 但是当他们冲到山顶上，又看到男孩躺在大石头上晒太阳，大声的拿村民气冲冲的脸来取笑。村民们又再一次把男孩骂了一顿，然后又回到村庄里去工作了。One week later. A real wolf appeared when the boy was tending the sheep in the hills. Wolf! Wolf! A wolf is attacking the sheep! The boy cried out in panic, but no one came to help. 一个礼拜之后，当男孩在山坡上牧羊时，一只狼真的出现了。狼来了！狼来了！有狼在攻击羊群啊！男孩惊慌地大叫，但是没有任何人来帮忙。Help! Help! A wolf is attacking the sheep. The boy cried again, even louder. 救命啊！救命啊！有狼在攻击羊群啊！这个男孩叫得更大声了。The boy was so scared that he climbed up a tree to hide from the wolf, while the wolf killed many sheep and ate as much as it wanted. 男孩为了躲避狼的攻击，赶紧爬上树去躲起来。这只狼因此可以尽情地捕捉并吃掉了许多的羊只。Later that evening, the villagers wondered why the boy had not returned home with the sheep yet. So some men went up into the hills to look for him. They found many dead sheep and the boy still in the tree. 到了晚上，村民们开始怀疑男孩跟羊群怎么还没回来呢？因此，男人们就到山坡上去寻找男孩跟羊群。他们发现的却是死掉的羊只和躲在树上的男孩。Why didn't you come when I yelled for help? The weeping boy asked, with tears rolling down his face. When I was screaming, why didn't you come to help me? The weeping boy asked, with tears rolling down his face. The weeping boy asked, with tears rolling down his face. The weeping boy asked, with tears rolling down his face. The weeping boy asked, with tears rolling down his face. The weeping boy asked, with tears rolling down his face. The weeping boy asked, with tears rolling down his face. The weeping boy asked, with tears rolling down his face. The weeping boy asked, with tears rolling 好，我们现在先休息一下，待会回来我们再为同学更仔细的做讲解。Welcome back. Let's take a look more at the writing model more closely in order to see what kind of changes we made from the original traditional version of this story. 好，欢迎各位同学回来。现在呢，我们再来仔细的看一下刚刚所我们所翻译的写作范例。我来看看这个写作范例跟传统的这个旧的版本有什么差别。All right. So now earlier we gave you one tip, which is to visualize the story when you're writing a folk tale, and this means to imagine in your mind any special details about the story. So you can visualize what the setting is like, or you can visualize what the characters are like. 
。好，我们刚刚曾经提到过呢，要写好一个民间故事，有一点很重要的是，你可以把你想象中这个故事形象化。哦，那这代表着你在你的头脑里面呢，要先去想象这整个故事发生的种种细节哦，包括呢，像是这个背景或是这个故事里面的角色，都应该要被先形象化。Okay, so now if we take a look at this、uh, slide here, we see the beginning of the original story, and here we see that we don't know anything about the village, and we don't know anything about the boy who, besides the fact that he's a shepherd boy. 好，我们可以看到这个是传统版本的开始哦。开头的部分，传统版本是很单刀直入的告诉你说，哦，这是一个呃牧羊男孩哦。那我们完全不知道关于这个牧羊男孩故事发生的背景，也不知道关于这个男孩的一些讯息。Right, so now let's take a look at our writing model, our modified version. 好，我们现在呢来看一下，经过我们修改之后，一个新的版本的开头是什么样子的呢？ And here at the beginning, we don't know the name of the village, but we do get some information about the setting. And so, for example, we learn that the village is in the hills. We also learn that there's a dark and dangerous forest nearby. 好，那虽然呢，这个新的版本哦，我们还是不知道这个村庄的名称是什么。但是呢，现在我们可以更了解这个村庄的背景了，包含呢，这个村庄是在山里头，而且呢，附近呢有一个又漆黑又危险的森林。Right, and then another thing that we learn is the motivation for the boy to cry wolf. 好，那另外一件我们从这个新的版本的故事中知道的很重要的事情呢，是为什么这个男孩呢要玩这样子的一个把戏，要这样大叫狼来了，狼来了。And so here we see in green, highlighted in green, we find that the job is very boring. And then highlighted in blue, we see that the shepherd boy never had anyone to talk to. And so this shows his motivation or why he wants to do such an evil or、uh, very, very mischievous trick. 好，我们可以看到呢，现在屏幕上面用绿色标注起来的字哦，这是第一个原因哦，也就是这个牧羊男孩的工作实在太无聊了哦。那蓝色标注的部分则是另外一个原因，就是因为他没有任何人可以跟他聊聊天哦。那因此呢，他才会想出这么邪恶而且这么淘气的一个小一个把戏哦，来恶整这些村民。Right, and so because we learn about the boy's motivation, we see that we can set up the potential for a conflict to occur. 好，那因为呢，我们更了解了这个男孩以及他的工作背景和内容，我们就更容易的理解到这个潜藏的问题到底是什么。So now, as we go on and take a look at the next paragraph, we see the beginnings of the conflict between the boy and the villagers, and you can see that we also add little details to add more depth to our story. 好，那接下来呢，我们来看在写作范例新版本里面哦的第二个段落哦。那你可以发现这地方呢加入了一些细节，让故事更有深度。And so, for example, we use phrases like "breathed in deeply" and "cried out loudly as he could" to, just, to describe the actions of the boy. Ah, we first can see that we used "breathed in deeply" and "cried out loudly as he could" to describe the actions of the boy. Ah, we first can see that we used "breathed in deeply" and "cried out loudly as he could" to describe the actions of the boy. Ah, we first can see that we used "breathed in deeply" and "cried out loudly as he could" to describe the actions of the boy. Ah, we first can see that we used "breathed in deeply" and "cried out loudly as he could" to describe the actions of the boy. Ah, we first can see that we used "breathed in deeply" and "cried out loudly as he could" to describe the actions of the boy. Ah, we first can see that we used "breathed in deeply" and "cried out loudly as he could" to describe the actions of the boy. Ah, we first can see that we used "breathed in deeply" and "cried out loudly as he could" to describe the actions of the boy. Ah, we first can see that we used "breathed in deeply" 好，我们还可以发现呢，这地方呢不止单纯的说他们抓起武器哦，他还提出了这些详细的务农用具，像是草耙啊、锄头啊，哦，都抓起来了，用来去抵抗这个呃来侵犯的羊呃狼群。All right. In the next section, we can see that we can add more life to the story by adding some dialogue. Instead of just stating that the villagers asked about the wolf, we include the actual questions that they shouted in the form of a dialogue. 好，那我们会发现呢，接下来我们一样依照我们之前讲的是修改的一些技巧，我们在这个呃改变的民间故事里面呢，加入了一些对话。哦，那与其呢只是单纯说，哎，村民过来关心羊群的状况，哦，那在我们这个版本里面呢，却加入了一些真实的对话。Let's take a moment to briefly talk about direct quotations. 好，我们现在呢，花一点时间来看一下直接引用的意思。A direct quotation is writing down exactly what a person says. 好，所谓直接引用呢，就是指将一个人说的话直接详细的记录下来。We might use a direct quotation in a narrative, in the narrative to spice up the story a bit. 好，我们可以使用直接引用的这种方式呢，来让叙事文的故事啊更添趣味。And you might use a direct quotation to show the colorful or unique accent or dialect of the speaker. 好，那直接引用呢，可以显示出像是说话者充满趣味，或是特别的口音，或是方言
and then this can make your character seem more lifelike or three-dimensional. 哦，这会让你的故事中的角色更加生活化，或者我们说啊，是更加的立体。And direct quotations can also pull your readers into the story more deeply. And when we read the quotations, we can feel more involved in the story. We can feel like we're a witness to the actual conversation between the speakers. 好，那直接引用呢，也可以帮助你去吸引你的读者更加的投入这个故事。我们可以感觉呢，好像就是自己亲眼见到了这些对话发生一样。哦，那也会让你呢，因此更加仔细的哦，去只想要知道这个故事发生了什么。And the direct quotation is made up of two parts: the quotation and the tag. 好，直接引用呢，通常分成两个部分，也就是所谓的引文以及标签语。So the quotation is the exact words of the speaker. 好，所谓的引文呢，哦，指的就是说话者所说话的内容。And the quote, the quotation is marked with quotation marks, and we also have many rules for punctuating a direct quotation. And you'll find out this kind of information in your textbook. 好，那这里所谓的这个直接引用引文的部分呢，哦，他会通常会用这个呃所谓的引号哦来做一个标示。然后呢，哦，这个引号呢，当然有一些使用上面的一些规定了哦，请各位同学呢可以参考课本上面会告诉你使用标点符号上面的一些哦需要注意的事项。And the tag is a statement that describes the speaker and the action of the quotation. 好，那所谓的标签语呢，指的是用来描述说话者与他的动作的一些叙述。And here are some examples of common tags. 好，那我们现在呢，给各位同学一些常见的标签语的例子。He said. 好，他说。She asked. 他问。John yelled. 哦，那约翰大声这个哦呼喊哦。And Shelley whispered. 哦，或是 Shelley 他这低声的这叙述。And these tags are just two words: the name of the person speaking, and then a word to describe the physical action that's occurring. 好，标签呢，通常呢包含了两个部分，一个是说话者的名字，哦，或者是称呼；那另外一个部分呢，则是描述动作的单字。And I'll let's show you one more example of a quotation and a tag from the writing model. 好，我们现在多看一个例子哦，这个是呃，使用这个呃标签的这个标签语的例子。And here you can see that we expanded the tag a bit to make it more descriptive, and so we create a fuller picture by describing the action of the boy with more detail. 好，那在这个例子里面呢，我们把标签语延伸延展了，让它更具有描述性。我们借由描述这个男孩的动作来创造出一个更完整的图像。And again, you learn more about this kind of direct quotations in the grammar focus section of your textbook. 啊，那一样的，各位同学可以在课本上面呢找到更多关于这个直接引用哦的一些文法上面的规规定。All right. Now, as we go on, we take a look at the rest of the the、uh, writing model. We can see that we're going to take some time, and you're going to expand the conflict. We're going to be adding details to flesh out the conflict until finally we get to a resolution where the far for the people from the village come and they find the boy who's had such a terrible time. 好，我们在接下来的故事发展中呢，可以发现哦，果然刚刚隐藏的冲突呢，今就在后面呢发生了。哦，那在这故事当中，我们当然就继续的讲述这个发生的过程以及最后的解决方式。Right, so you can see we took a, a very simple story and we added a lot to it. And so for your homework, you can do the same kind of thing. You want to take a story, maybe a traditional story, and then write it in your own words, make a more modern version of your story. 好，那在呃，我们现在呢，跟各位同学已经讲解过写作的方式，所以呢，各位同学回去在写作业的时候，哦，要一样就是选择你喜欢的一个民间故事，然后去创作出一个现代的版本。Right, thanks for joining us this week for English composition. We'll be back in one more week. 好，谢谢各位同学今天的参与，我们下个礼拜再见。